What's going on everybody? It's Childish, back at it again, coming at you with our second video for our team building series in Skylanders Ring of Hero. Once again, we have brought on board Legendary Handy to help us out in today's video. We're gonna be taking a look at that bomb team and see what kind of recommendations he has here. Andy, are you with me, sir? Yes, thank you so much for having me once again. Once I again, I know. Back. <laughs> I know. It's been so long since we talked, all the three minutes. <laughs> they're, they're like, oh my God, it's been 24 hours, been waiting so long. I'm like, well, we didn't. You know, we waited about five seconds and we pressed the record <laughs> button again. But uh, anyways, guys, we're going to jump right into it. We took a little bit of uh, time to kind of set aside and check out these uh, specific teams. And for me, I'm actually really, really excited to hear about this one because I had a, a quite a bit of... Uh, uh, units out there back in the original version uh, with regards to bomb scenes. Bombs were really, really strong here, but now I'm curious to hear uh, the legendary Andy's opinion when it comes to the 2020 version of Skylanders Rig of Heroes and, and everything and anything to do with bombs here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it, sir. Yeah, thank you so much once again, Childish, for having me once again. Yeah. But to start off this bomb team, guys, obviously everybody's going to worry about the legendary first. So the first the two legendaries that I'm going to want to talk about that you should be using on this bomb team slash doing a, a lot of damage is going to be Spitfire. Spitfire is going to allow you to land the bomb and it's going to be able to detonate the bombs. So you want to surround Spitfire with units. Again, I will get to in just a little bit here, but like Boomer and Blast Zone and Smoter Dash. But again, I will get to in just a little bit here. But basically, Spitfire is going to allow you to one have more accuracy or accuracy on himself and his his leader skills. I believe his leader skill gives him accuracy as well. Yeah, so his leader skill is going to give him accuracy. But the main the key to Spitfire is detonating the bombs. So if you surround him with a huge team, a huge bomb comp, a bomb comp, the detonation is going to be huge. Mm -hmm. In terms of like leveling up skills, I would definitely level up the skill three and skill two because one it detonates and two it's the it's obviously the aoe bond which is what you're trying to focus here in terms of ember guys ember one is not going to land as much bombs but ember is going to do a lot more damage i don't as a free-to-play player with zero super boost i wouldn't highly recommend an ember i'll highly i'll highly recommend a spitfire instead of an ember because in terms of like a bomb comp, you don't need a lot of stats on a legendary for a bomb comp to work right mm -hmm. so that's why spitfire kind of um, I guess is is an advantage over Ember because right. you don't need amazing stats. You just need him to have effect accuracy, land a bomb, dent a bomb, and boom, there you go. Whereas Ember here is going to require a little bit more stats and kind of evolve you to go effect accuracy, crit rate, crit damage, attack, and it's going to require more higher gear equipment or higher equipment gear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, so Ember here is going to have explosion, do a lot of damage, the leader skill attack up, crit ray up on herself. But in terms of like skill up, if you were to go the Ember route, I would highly recommend scaling up the, I believe it was the passive skill. Yeah, the passive skill to one, increase the attack up. That That's overall on a team, it's just going to be better. Applying damage, your 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 whole team is doing more damage. It's going to be overall a better a better comp and then moving on it would be skill one because you want the skill one to be a one mana cost one mana cost for any skylander is going to be huge right so in order i would do maybe i might even do skill one first and then the leader skill but definitely skill one and then you'll eventually want to get to the leader skill for ember gotcha. in terms of like heroics guys there's a quite a few units such as smoter dash here quickly go over Smoter Dash. Smoter Dash is basically going to land Explosion, 6-star Awaken, Defense Break, Unrecoverable, which is huge for Cyclops because Cyclops, once again, does heal himself. You have the Unrecoverable on him. He's not going to be able to heal. On top of that, you land Explosion, additional damage, and Smoter Dash is going to do additional damage if there's a bomb effect on the boss. So he's going to... Right. Smoter Dash is going to be able to proc an additional hit on the Cyclops, allowing you to, again, just do more damage overall. In terms of scaling up, guys, I would highly recommend scaling up skill 2 first, mainly because of the Endurance Down. Endurance Down, if you bring it down to zero... Wow you can hit it to break or you can bring it down to knockdown. And that's going to be huge in terms of just giving that's yourself crazy. more advantage. That's crazy. I didn't even notice that it had five on the endurance zone. That's, that's sick. Right. Yeah. That just, so that was like, that was the first skill that I skilled up skill two. And after that, I scaled up skill one in order to, um, uh, you know, just give it more, just give, I, I believe it goes from a three mana cost to a two mana cost. So that's again, huge, more mana for you to use. 
So that would be the skill order that I will skill up for Smother Dash. Move on to Shark. Another one, another good unit for a bomb is going to be Shark Tank. A unit that I regret not building first. I must have missed him right at the very beginning. But basically, Shark Shooter is going to land Diminish and an AoE bomb. And especially if you're having two effects, like again, similar to the Poison Team's Poison and Diminish. Here we have Diminish and Bomb. Being able to apply those double duty continuous damage is going to be huge for your team overall. On top of that, once you get to the stop, uh, the boss stage guys these five additional times if you kill the side crystals all these attacks are going to hit the boss doing massive damage on top of that landing explosion um to land that effect as well but that is the, a reason why you want to build shark shooter in terms of like scaling up i would highly recommend scaling up skill two just so you can lower it. so if we look here it's a four mana cost but if we max skill it it's going to be a three mana cost only again one may not be so much, but it adds up over time, especially if you're scaling up like most of your units. Those minus one mana cost is going to be huge. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the next one, the one, another one that I will recommend, but doesn't really do a lot of damage, is going to be Dive Clops here. So the main reason why I'm like recommend, recommending Dive Clops is because of his not not the not the bomb, but the passive here. Every time he attacks, guys, he's going to be able to remove two buffs or 75% chance to remove two buffs on the enemy. And we know Cyclops, again, should be everybody's goal, has crit ray up and attack up, I believe, or it was defense up and crit ray up. So being able to remove that buff and applying a skill one explosion is going to be huge for your team. Again, it's, it probably won't do as much damage, but in terms of like utility-wise, mechanic-wise, he's a great unit to have on your team to use as a stripper for Cyclops. Yeah. In terms of what skills I would skill up, I would definitely do skill one, and just so you can land the explosion more and then the passive skill. And then in terms of like rare units, Boring rare units, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're, too, you're so pro, man. You know, you're like, I don't even use those free to play units. Ah, um, for oh my god, rare units you can use blast zone again. It's pretty simple. AoE or, or has a AoE explosion, scale one explosion. In terms of scaling up, if you do build a blast zone, max out skill two in order to practice skill two more for the AoE bombs for the boomer. Boomer is a good unit too because right. not only does he apply bomb, but he can also knock down, and that's going to be huge in terms of like again a cyclops. And as and and actually, I, I don't think a lot of people know this, but if you actually awaken Boomer to six star awaken, his his skill too because of the AOE bomb. So mm -hmm. as as you can see here, if if we click it where it's not skilled up here, it's actually only a one. It, it, it does damage to one enemy only. But mm -hmm. if we fully max it out, it actually becomes an AoE, which makes it just that much better for a team comp. Especially if you're running like a Spitfire with it, it's going to be able to detonate all those bombs, um, allowing you to do more damage. So that that's going to be a huge one. Right. And when you support, oh, sorry, what was that? I was going to say one thing to mention too that I don't think people take a look at is that skill three, being able to successfully evade and get another opportunity to put on a bomb oh, there. So. Yes. That might be yes. something to throw in there. I was thinking to myself, like, wow, maybe that would be a good thing to like put some kind of like, I don't know, like evasion enchantment or, you know, maybe have fun with a, a team like this that would uh, uh, potentially have, you know, some kind of evasion buff that you can incorporate on this one. Or even that Porter Master that has the evasion buff down the road. I don't know. Yeah. That, that might be something cool to mess around with. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for mentioning that. I definitely, definitely forgot about this passive skill. As you know, like this game is relatively new. So still I new, yeah. forget sometimes. So I got your back. I got your one. back. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that one. That's something, yeah, that's something I got to keep in mind now, too. Yeah, but like you said, the Porter Master, the evasion, that, that can potentially be something you'd use. But I would highly recommend just use the shield one because the amount of shield you get is just so massive. Right. But um, moving on, again, Flash Wing support, no big deal. Flash Wing, Ill we heal. It's going to be able to defense break skill one, endurance up. Flash Wing is going to be a unit that you're not going to be able to replace. And then premiums. You can, you can't, I mean, hot dog has a explosion, but who wants to build a hot dog, right? Yeah, yeah. Hot dog, hot dog is 2018 Skylanders. I don't, I don't think it's going to find its way into the meta. <laughs> yeah. So like if you're missing out one unit, like you just don't have a bomb comp, a, a bomb Skylander that I previously just mentioned, you can, again, you can just fill it up with an, a poison or diminished Skylander that's a rare or heroic and you'd be perfectly fine. Gotcha. Well, let me ask but, you this here, since yeah. we've already talked in the first video 
um, uh, as far as the Poison Team comp goes. And for those of you guys that didn't catch that video, I'll go ahead and leave a link up in the top right so you guys can go ahead and check that out. Uh, we have that Poison Team versus the Bomb Team. Now, uh, this will be the first time we can do it like a little comparison of uh, contrast here. In your humble opinion, um, you know, kind of weigh it out. Let me, let me know about the pros versus poison and, and, and the bombs. You know, when I think about those bombs, you know, it's tons of damage, but we also have to wait for the bombs to go off. So if we're not fortunate enough to have that Spitfire, it's like, ah, man, how, you know, how good is it? But is it still, do you still find it valuable or do you still think that maybe the poison team is the, is the top dog here as far as those two team builds go? Yeah, so it's exactly what you said. Like the three turn, like most of these bombs, I think all of them are like three turns. So on top of that, these Cyclops stages have like a lot of resist. So if you miss, you don't have a lack of effect accuracy, you you miss your bomb, then that's done. And then now you have to wait like a like a, a lot of turn, like a lot of cooldown for it to come back up to try to reapply that bomb. So that is a huge a huge disadvantage of these bomb this bomb meta. Not only does it take three turns, but if you get resisted, it's kind of like, oh, where is your damage going to come now? Right. Right. So that is the reason why I would say a poison team will benefit more because on top of that if you especially if you're running a boom bloom being able to reapply maybe if, even if it's just one or two poison effects on the enemy it, that, that's two that's two one or two more poison effects that you're going to have on them if you use that boom bloom con copy continuous damage skill so in terms again 100 percent attack yes great build a lot of attack if it lands better but if it doesn't land you're kind of you know you just lose on a lot of damage, so. Gotcha. And one random question to ask you too, uh, as I didn't mention it when you were talking about the NAT5, so uh, for the uh, community out there that are doing the whole re-rolling or doing your selective summons, you know, you definitely can get uh, Spitfire in that lineup and uh, Spitfire is a, a very, very strong unit. Obviously it's kind of the main counterpart of this one in order to enable those bombs here. But um, let's say somebody, for example, whether they're free to play, pay to win, uh, have been super fortunate uh, to be able to pull both of these units here um do you go with a spitfire leader skill um or do you go with ember providing that attack buff for the whole party leader skill i kind of like a, i kind of like ember in the spot what do you what do you think yes i i agree 100 percent ember lead for the attack up more attack means higher bomb, bomb explosion so i think it only makes sense so you pull both of these or you're running both of them ember lead then spitfire as a secondary on the third slot ideally for me you can run shark shooter terrafin or you can run smarter dash depending on who you have every account is going to be different and that fourth slot is going to have to be flashwing until later on when we have some incredible amazing equipment where we where we can replace flashing with another damage dealer but as of right now that would be the ideal i guess you can say my prime team that i would use would be ember spitfire smarter dash or shark shooter terrafin depending on who i have on more super boosted and then a flashwing yeah, very, very cool. And if I recall correctly, Ember's leader skill, um, no, I'm sorry, Smolder Dash's leader skill is the one that provides the attack power for all fire units, correct? Yes, that is correct. And that's one thing that I almost forgot to mention. So thank you for reminding me once again. The passive uh, or the leader skill on Smolder Dash is going to be more beneficial if you don't have, or if you're running a fire comp, that is. It's going to be more beneficial if you don't have Ember's lead skilled up. But once you have Ember's lead scaled up, it will be more beneficial to run Ember as lead. But until then, if you're running a fire comp, just run Smarter Dash as a lead in order to get your fire units more damage and your explosion more damage overall. So Gotcha. And then, of course, uh, as we said before in the previous video, folks, you know, we're recommending three units that synergize well when it comes to the bomb teams here. Um, but uh, we also, as far as the support goes, it's still going to be the same. Our, our recommendation is going to be Flashwing all day, every day. Uh, right. She's just too good of a unit there. <laughs> Um, now, one of the things that I think people might overlook, you know, if they don't have, you know, all these specific bomb units is, is that there's actually some other good units out there um, that, you know, you can throw in just kind of a substitute that ever, people are already building. And if I had to mention one off the top of my head, I'd have to say Igniter is going to be the one to kind of fill in there, right? Yes, definitely. If you're lacking some of these heroes, 100%, in my opinion, Igniter is going to be the top tier most nuking rare unit that, that you're going to be uh, e like easily be able to build. I have mine built and I got compensated thousands of gems. Mine's, su uh, mine's max six star awakened plus five, as you can see, or I mean, I guess this is what's given to you. But basically, I have it built. It's, I'm one-shotting the C5 waves and so can you. <laughs> <laughs> I so, like it. I like so it. You and... So you definitely can build an igniter as well right and and one thing that we'll probably talk about down the road um you know for for future series once we get a little bit more insight on it you know you know uh, teams that 
kind of our focus around the high endurance and knockdowns and stuff like that. And um, now I didn't even think about it up until you mentioned it. The smolder dash igniter combo, having two units out there with four and five uh, endurance down. I mean, that's that is massive. That's going to help you guys out so much in the boss, keeping that boss down, not allowing them to do when they do those charge up abilities here, being able to knock them down and do a little bit more DPS. I'm like, I'm actually legitimately like excited to, um, you know, get a smolder dash and get it maxed out here. Actually, big shout out to, to Codations. Codations is actually trying to get himself a smolder dash. And I didn't realize, you know, I wasn't picking up what he was putting down um, because of the fact that like, I, I didn't realize how good she, I mean, she was good. I love the leader scope, but I didn't pay attention to that endurance down. And that's, that is massive when pairing it up with igniter. Holy cow. Yeah. yeah I was what? Say, if you're, if you're <laughs> what surprised about smaller dash, you're going to be surprised what? about um, Ember here too. Six Whoa. Down. <laughs> okay. I need to pull an Ember right now. I need to pull an Ember right now. Oh dear. That is, that is yeah. crazy. So uh, as far as the uh, team composition though, uh, in a, in a perfect world, what everyone has, you know, all the opportunities to, to build all the units. Uh, which one here? What, what's your final decision? Poison team or bomb team? Which one would you build? I'm going to have to lean more towards the poison team all here. Right. Specifically because of this copy or boom, boom skill. Copies continuous yep. damage. It's just way too overpowered. And it's, it's, it's Shh, going to tell, help benefit so much. So <laughs> 100%, if I was to pick life or death situation... Right. Poison team will be <laughs> yeah. the way yeah. to go. All right. Well, sounds good, my man. Uh, once again, thank you for coming on board and giving us the insight for the bomb team. Uh, as always, folks, uh, if you guys haven't had a check out Legendary Andy, I will leave some links in the description down below for his YouTube channel as well as the Twitch channel so you guys can show him the support, the support that you guys have been showing me over the past six years. I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, Andy, thank you so much again for coming on board and doing this collaboration with me. Yeah, thank you so much for having me once again. So All right. Appreciate it. Sounds good. Thank you, sir. And uh, once again, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. It's your boy Childish and Andy with Childish Place checking out. Take care, and we will see you all in the third episode of our team building series. We're out.